All right, welcome back to the Double Swing. It's been a little while since I've recorded one of these, but of course, the releases have been regular. But this is going to be a preview of the ESL Pro League playoffs. Before we can actually get into all that goodness, we have to recap Groups A and B and Group C and D, all of which have gone down and, well, to varying results. Group A and B, three out of four for myself, three out of four for Thorin standing in for Yumi, and a perfect score from the viewers who... Well, you've got to lay up, really. Uh, but good picks. We agreed with both of them, and they both went through. Group C and D is where things got spicy, though. It came down to the last day for Maui to try and get a perfect 4-4, four four, but unfortunately, Red Canids could not outlast Furia, giving him and Yumi the same score of 3 out of 4. My score was a respectable, honest attempt. A 1 out of 4. Not great, but complexity upsetting Maui's ended up working out in my favor, something I never thought I'd say. But on to this episode. It's the Pro League Playoffs, and joining me are what I can only call the Leet Speak duo. Yes, these two, they're two men I've known for a good long while, and those of you who watch my channel will know Quack very well. You've seen him every Sunday for the past, I think, almost 40 Sundays. I think we're on 39 episodes of Retake the Week. Uh, yeah, so it would have be been, it would have been, them. it would have been October, November. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. So we're yeah. coming up on it. It's been a long time, and why not? You may recognize his voice, especially from CCT broadcasts, North American Counter-Strike broadcasts as well. He's been all over the shop. And we'll start with you. Why not? How you been? I mean, you've not been on this channel for a long time. You were here once discussing evil geniuses, but since then, you've been quite a busy man. Yeah, yeah. Time is uh, a valuable thing, my friend. Uh, there's so much to do in the world of both Counter-Strike and, you know, like the grass-touching one. Uh, it's been... A long time just making sure that everything is just getting done, figured out uh, in the way of, you know, career being a caster is like something I want to pursue. But it's always fun to find time for content. So I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, my pleasure. I've been wanting to get you on more stuff before. It's just finding the yeah. right time, you know. Um, Quack, how you been since all of fucking eight hours ago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, another, sweet, it's another, another midnight special on the King T channel um it's been a football game i watched a football game and it was very nice and then i saw another football game and it was horrible guess which one it was it was tottenham arsenal um and then nothing else has really happened but yeah i'm i'm on air plugging all my shit all the time so i might as well plug our show for once a little bit extra um so we do the really reason why we the lead speak do is because we do a podcast called lead speak for uh elite clan these guys the guys whose hoodie i'm currently wearing um yeah it's very nice we interview a lot of interesting people uh this yeah, it's coming out before the playoffs, so uh, next episode should be coming out. It would be probably, like, in the next few days. I said this on Retake the Week as well. Uh, it's a very good one. And here's another hint. It's an in-game leader this time. He's got a brain on him. Mm. Yeah. Quite right the mouth, but, from what I understand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a little fresh. He got some, Tony, got some fresh takes. When I send you the, like, timestamping one for this, you're going to laugh your ass off because I'd forgotten how good this episode was. It was ridiculously good. Yeah, it is really good. So, yeah, plugging yeah. aside, we're here, we're now, we're, we're ready to double swing. I'm ready to, I'm ready to peak. I'm ready to peak. Put me yeah. in, coach. Yeah, I mean, of course, I will be messaging Waller about my paycheck for all the promo I do for his shows. I mean, clearly, yeah. his number one advertiser. He's going to start paying you? He's going to start paying you? <laughs> and all those hundreds of views are mine. They're all for me. Oh, my God. All my promo, clearly. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the first pick. Quack, you represent the people in this episode because that's how the webcams ended up lining up. Uh, so you I get always first do. pick. Who are you taking to win mm. ESL Pro League? <laughs> I'm taking uh I'm gonna take Team Spirit to win ESL Pro League. Wow, I was gonna say uh you're an idiot because like we that was basically what we went into this saying. It's either you did a really good thing or you're an idiot. And I can't say that. I think that's a good pick. I think that's a really good yeah. pick. Considering this is a studio land, I think that's actually the best case scenario for a spirit choice. I can't motivate it in any other way that I think uh Donk beat a fucking kill record in this one event. Uh Shiro looks good. Yeah. Um, they really bounce back from Cologne. They do have some issues. Like they do have some issues with Magix and Zontix and Chopper and whatnot. Um, I don't think they fuck up that hard in playoffs. Honestly, I think they sh should get better come playoffs, um, especially studio playoffs. So yeah, I think they're. I think they're pretty much not a lock in. Like I can see competition for them here. But I, I, th I do think we spirit win, and even if they don't, I think we see Donk MVP. I think we get very close to this. Jeez. So like, I think they'll be MVP. in the final. 
Okay. I think they'll be they'll be in the final. I I guess maybe if they face Vitality in the final depends on the draw. We don't have the bracket yet, so um, if they face Vitality in the final, then yes, I would just put up a two something rating against Liquid. So um, on one of these maps, so uh, if, uh, it could be a competition perhaps. But I I think they'll be in the final at the very least, and I almost no matter who they play, I would probably take them to win that. Yeah. Oh, that's a okay. That's a bold start because. I had this whole thought in my, like process going on in my head. I'm looking at how the playoffs going to be structured. I'm thinking, you've got to be picking someone who's a top seed first, surely. And he goes yep. straight with a third seed. He's got to win one, two, three. Best of threes just to make a yeah. point. That's a bold take, my friend. I, I respect you for it. Honestly, you've got to believe in the donk. You've got to believe in Shiro. You've got to believe in Chopper's ability to make those pieces work. I, clearly, you have a lot of faith, especially in the donk. Let's be real. You've, you've centered your entire case around donk. I don't know. I would have. I would have liked to pick someone a lot closer to the points at the fast. But I do also represent the people here. And would the people not pick Spirit? Like, would they not? Of course they would. Given their it, track it, record so far at this specific event, they probably would have picked Navi or someone else with a better chance. I think. Yeah, I think uh, you say that, but also I think about the fact that Mouse is the team I would have picked if Mouse even still existed to win it all. But they're not even here. Like, no. they're the team in the studio. They're the defending champions who aren't even going to be in playoffs, so... Yeah, I think I, I think Spirit make... I do think Spirit make top four. I think it's a very... It's going to be hard for them not to, I think. I think There's they some have, absurdities going on here. Yeah, I think they're going to be favorites in pretty much whatever game they get in the first two games, at least. And then the next one, they should win. Like, I think, I think they're close to number one at the moment. Yeah, well, hopefully, uh, just to... Throw some, uh, throw a spanner in the works. Somehow they get matched up with Mongols and lose again. That'd be hilarious to me. Wow. We know it's not probably not possible because they're both Group B teams, but you never know. That'd be a cheeky little matchup to see opening up the playoffs. Why not? You have the second pick as the replacement for Yumi. Uh, who have you taken? Well, you don't know because we're, we're drawing the entire yeah. draft live. So we are we, we are doing this live. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be going with uh, with Navi. You you kind of mentioned it as picking one of the higher seeded teams. I think it only makes sense to go with Navi right now in their current form. They're not under any pressure. There's no duress for them to be able to go into this one and you know think about holding up a, a status or anything of that nature. This is just gonna be them either getting a win here at Pro League or not. This is not gonna be something that's gonna be like defining for them as like uh uh, a short-term era thing uh, in any stretch. I don't think that they're going to be like upset should they not win out. I think that they're going to move into their next tournament with their chins up regardless of the results here. And I think that's going to give them a really big buff over a lot of teams like, say, like a phase, for example, that have a lot to prove in every tournament they play at this point. It isn't going to be one of these things where it's like, ah, oh, it's just pro league. It's the studio land, whatever, guys, we move on. No, it's kind of like, all right, you got to be able to show you can do it everywhere because right now you're not doing it anywhere we expect you to. Hmm. I, I respect that pick. I respect the I respect the Navi pick. I think it's uh, they're already already locked in for top eight. Um, I, the thing about pressure, yeah, for sure. I think uh, that's definitely something that would be to the benefit of some of the players on there. They've already played really great. Um, yeah, I can't really argue with that pick. To be honest, I probably should have gone with Navi instead. <laughs> <laughs> the, the people, the people are like quack, quack, like grabbing the camera. <laughs> yeah, maybe you let them down. We'll find out. Navi, you know, they have been a little more consistent, sort of this season. You know, they've kind of found a little more consistency in their riflers, more ups than downs now from wonderful, you know, positive signs. So perhaps they are. Destined for a downswing because they've been too good recently. Maybe that could be the problem. It's also um, too. For me, yeah, I said Navi should be number one pick. It's just because the IGL, the coach, the system, the number of win conditions they have in that rifle core and the way they can be activated. I mean, Im has been on absolute heater recently. I think they're the team with the hot hand, and that hand is Romanian. So Navi for me would have been the first pick. I would have loved it. But I have two picks now in this ladder draft, and I am. Considering something obnoxiously cheeky, I'm not going to do it. What I'm going to do, it would have been it'd have been too much. It'd have been too much. But I'm going to start with a team I have maybe BM'd a little bit, roasted, made fun of, you know, desecrated. Because some people do worship this lineup. And that's G2. They're a number one seed. It cannot be denied that they have a layup here. All they have to do is win a single best of three. And given the fact that they are the best deathmatch team on the planet. 
they can do it against pretty much anyone. It's just always been a question of doing it consistently and doing it well enough to actually win a grand final. So far, they haven't been able to. This could be their event. Uh, this is going to be one of their final opportunities to really maximize this roster's potential, get a win with Nico, lift a trophy, prove that Snacks was definitely a pick. End pick. <laughs> just a pick, but also a pick uh, created using facts and logic rather than friendy, buddy-buddy types ideals that we know were definitely an option here. I, I do think that as much as I've roasted that pick in the past, they have to get credit for just picking up Malv's MD, taking that step into just this monster roster of just firepower on firepower on firepower. They're going to be hard to match up with. I think they should be taking a win here. You guys got anything to say against that before I move on to my second pick, or is this going to get yeah, ripped I think, apart? I think that's a good enough pick for me, because I think no matter the team that they go up against, it's round one, like you said, it's number one seed, and Malv's is probably just going to play it out, man. I have one thing to say, uh -oh. yeah, and uh, that is, I think they made playoffs in Cologne. I think, and they did, they did it in pretty dominant fashion, considering the score lines they had on each map, like yep. pretty much single digits. It was Monacy all the way. Um, they still looked really shaky, especially with what we know now from ESL Pro League against some of the teams they played against. Uh, they lost to Saw. They beat Spirit, who were limp dicked at that event, to be honest. Like they they were absolutely nowhere. Um, they lose a map to Astralis who went out just uh, quite early in this ESL Pro League. They beat Pain, which is no huge surprise. And then they lose to Maus in Cologne, 2-0 um, in playoffs. Despite Monacy going huge, Nico was nowhere. Maus are now out of ESL Pro League. The opposition they played at their last event, and then also like this, this number one seed they have, it's probably the most free out of absolutely anyone right now because they beat Koi. They beat 3D Max and still lost the map. And then they beat MIBR, which is quite unexpected like that's quite expected especially since then maybe are like this was already locked in in for playoffs so i uh, i do think whoever g2 play in that top eight matchup is going to be their biggest test since cologne where i think they probably missed the mark considering where they should be and wanna be so are g2 a lock-in i mean maybe i don't know i yeah uh, that's maybe a question mark for them. That it's been a while since we saw them go up against inform, very good opposition and win. I think that's Esports World Cup pretty much, and that was right after a break. So inform mm -hmm. might not even apply fully. So, um, is it to yeah, be? I have I picked know. them after, like, literally again, four, five, six hours ago, calling them frauds outright in my tier list. Uh, but at the same time, it's with the caveat of they're like the fourth or fifth best team in the world. <laughs> loaded with fragging they're just not got a real igl and that's been their problem here yeah i'm just loving their odds just win it win a series win a series you score points and then after that with the seedings the way things are going to play out for everyone else it could get kind of weird kind of funky in their next round you, matchup, you, so. you got a layup pick with considering you've got two here i will say you yeah, know what i mean mm. yeah and i've got a sec i mean i don't know if they're going to win their game they're playing right now uh but i'm, I'm going to bet they are because i like them on dust too i'm going to take vitality <laughs> To be, and I'm assuming they're going to be a number one seed. And this is filthy. This is degenerate. This is this is grim, I think. I, I don't know how I've managed to engineer this so perfectly, but yeah, I haven't got Vitality. Uh, I've, hmm. got, I've got Sai The Wu. host? The host? The, the host getting third pick and getting two number one seeds? <laughs> <laughs> Without having to pick M80? Man, someone yes. blew it. <laughs> pick M80. <laughs> no, I'm no, taking Vitality all the it, way. They're going to they're going to be a one seed. I think they win this game against Liquid. If they don't, they're a two seed. You watch. Karma will bite me in the ass. They'll get put into G2's bracket. For now, yep. though, all I can say is what I like about this team, which mostly is two two players, Zaiwu and Flamesy, and they've been outstanding. Zaiwu, of course, in contention, as always, to be the best player in the world. Clearly not this year going to win that award, but still outstanding. Uh, there's a lot of superlatives you can assign to him. His reluctance to dominate with the AWP has been questionable at times this year. But honestly, it's been good enough to keep them as one of the three best teams in the world. Flamesy on the rifle, on the T side especially, has been a monster impact, winning rounds outright just with opening aggressions, opening fights. I still question Apex as a leader in terms of his temperament. Uh, but 
his calling strategically is good enough. He's got quality rifles alongside him who, sure, we might expect more from Spinks, but we've got plenty as it is. This team is destined for another top four at worst. Between these two picks, surely one of them, surely one of them makes the grand final or even lifts that trophy. Like maybe they lose that final game to a spirit, to a Navi. But I see them making it, at least one of them. Mm. I, yeah, I think that just looking at the at the brackets as they are, as they were, and how all the games unfolded, it doesn't make any sense for that not to be your choice. I mean, they they didn't have any real issues against Atox. I mean, it got like a little close on a map, but it was never really a worry as a shadow of a doubt of them losing a series. They walked over Viria. They're technically uh, doing a pretty good job in a game that doesn't really matter. Um, it, it's still a seeding match between them and Liquid, but even so, it really I think Liquid aren't any pushovers. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I don't think I don't think they're a pushover in any stretch uh, though, Vitality. I think um uh, excuse me in liquid so i think them actually taking this win is going to be pretty nice uh, i think that if like somebody would, somebody were to have said liquid in this i don't know if that's a pick that you guys have in your brains down the line but i wouldn't be shocked and i also wouldn't be upset to to, uh, to agree with you in that cadence if it was your th second or third pick so it's a it's a close map so far as well uh liquid yeah. took a 5-2 lead but then they've also just blown it to 5-7 okay um <laughs> My bad. But they they go on to the T side. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Could you go? Yeah, could let's just start casting this game. Yeah, let's just start <laughs> casting this game. Uh, no, it's a respectable pick. I, I probably would have picked Vitality if nobody else did. Uh, it's a, it's a, they're a good team. I, I do expect them to make it deep. Um, yeah, Cologne champions, solidly. I wonder if that's like a barrier that they've kind of broken through for this year mm. now, that like now they can be proper good, which, you know, show up for the second half of the season maybe take a major win who knows um yeah i i'm i'm i have a hard time picking apart picking holes in vitality um just in general i think even mezzi is like as a weak point is not exactly losing games um or events they you know clone champion um yeah good job um, I guess Flamesy could go a bit harder in the playoffs, but I think he's also been one of those players who do show up big in playoffs pretty much every time. Um, I think he has, like in the world, I think he has one of the highest playoff rating deltas, so to speak. Like he 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 really improves in those games. So yeah, I can't argue with that pick. Um, the only thing is if they go down to like the top twelve seed, um, because then maybe it could get rough. It could genuinely get rough. Yeah, they'd have blown their seeding match against Liquid in that case. And mm. once you start losing to Liquid, you know, historically, it's not been a great sign, at least in recent memory. I mean, I'm liking it. I'm happy. It's like, is I Liquid fucking honest. back or is the team in the trash? Yeah. <laughs> like every yeah, time. Like, <laughs> have to ask right now. Like, is, is Twists actually a god tier for Aggie IGL? Is Ultimate just the ultimate diamond in the rough? Ah, uh, there's a lot of questions great. to ask, but hey. Before we get those answers, we need to pick the rest of our teams. And True. Tony, you've got a second pick. Who are you taking? Yeah, I'm in the awkward position where you guys are going to get, you know, the, the chance that both to get two teams at one time. So I need to really be careful about this. I wanted to be a little bit funny. I wanted to be a little bit silly and go for a team that's out there. But I think I'm going to save that for my third pick and go a little bit more on the safer side and say that FaZe Clan is my team that kind of needs to perform here. So I'm going to go with them. Uh, I, I said it in already uh, our discussion about how the, the pressure of Na'Vi isn't on for the reasons as mentioned, but it is for FaZe, and it's either sink or swim in that regard, man. Like, it is time to fight. Um, there's a lot on the line for them at the ends of the season now as we're entering the ends of the year as well. A lot of these players have to be finding themselves with a little bit of unrest, perhaps, in how these games have looked, in how these have looked, five to sixes, five to eights. Like these, these results for them in the last three months, four months have just been frankly unacceptable for a team that's aiming for number ones. They're not even making playoffs and, or excuse me, they're not even making semis. They're not even making the finals of these events. And uh, I think a studio show is where if they can't make it that far, if they can't go the distance to at least get themselves to a top four or a top two or a win, I'm, I'm, I'm frankly going to be a little bit upset with that. So that's my pick. I'm going with FaZe. I respect it. I respect the face pick. Um, but I don't think I agree. I think they have a good chance of knock being knocked out early on, actually, as that third seed. Because um, I could honestly see them lose to pretty much anybody right now. Um, sure, we also talked. We, we, <laughs> yeah, we also talked about this on Retake the Week earlier. It was um, They're kind of in a gatekeeper situation right now where it has been a hot while since they beat an informed top five team. 
um, they lose pretty fucking consistently to Vitality and G2 and, and the like. Um, so to win this event, that would be a proper, that would be a big upswing for them. Um, but as you say, they do have that pressure. I think there are roster changes happening in the nearish future, end of season at the latest. Um, well, probably would be end of season because they're in the major, major cycle. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you can make one move, but yeah, they they won't. Um, so uh, they definitely do have the pressure. It could get difficult. Like they, if I'm if I'm reading this correctly, they should absolutely play either Furia, Complexity, the Mongols, or Heroic, and. I mean, they should obviously beat all of those teams, but they also def. I I could honestly see them lose all of those four games, to be honest. Right. Uh, no matter who they play, it really depends. They're very up and down at the moment, so hmm. important event for them. But I, I wouldn't I, go I was, that but, far. That was a yeah. I didn't want to be I, too rude, but maybe your foresight needs some glasses because they have been for the last well for a long time now able to win the games they're very heavily favored in pretty consistently the problem is just okay, taking yeah. that step up beating the elite teams making the deeper run winning because they haven't made yeah. top four even since they won Chengdu at a real yeah. event and that's shocking for a roster of this caliber of this pedigree of this history you know they're supposed to be a big dog and they've currently been well a chihuahua really the tiniest <laughs> dog they can be while still having a lot of yap to them uh, yeah, yeah. a lot of yap. <laughs> yeah, a lot of yap, have, yeah. but not a lot of results. I have just realized I literally go against what I said earlier today. So, <laughs> yeah, um, they probably win their first game. But I, my point still stands that I think they have a rough time beating, unless they end up lucking out with like the M80 side of the bracket. I think they have a rough time play beating anyone who's already in that eight, like in that top eight seed. They um, do. So, because it is going to be Navi, or it is going to be G2, or it is going to be um, ah, fucking Vitality, I guess, probably, unless Liquid make this happen. Um, so, and that's going to be a rough game for them, no matter what. So, I respect, the, I respect the show of confidence, I think, and I think they win a couple of games, now that I reconsider it. But, um, top four, I think, uh, top four would be, that would be an improvement for them over their form for the past months. Honestly, mm-hmm. and that's weird to say about face. To be entirely yeah, honest. It yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, to paint you the picture yeah. of how that happens, though, there's obviously conflicting narratives when you talk about like these sorts of playoff formats where some teams will play more and others have to sit there, and it's about you know heating up versus getting cold, and mm-hmm. you just have to bet it on that. Like no matter who they come up against, if they've had to win a series or they are a three seed, right? They're not a two seed. They're they a are. Four they seed. are a three seed, so they should have a so favorable have matchup. Win. Two, have, but they have to win two series to just to get to that matchup against yeah. the G two, the Vitality, the M eighty. If they're lucky, uh, that's going to be a fair bit of momentum. If they can crush a couple of opponents, Frozen, you know, gets aggressive, gets cocky, starts hitting a lot of shots. Brokey has himself a bit of a comeback. He's had a couple down events. At that point, that sort of momentum is going to be hard to stop with the Corley of Carrigan to support. You know, the master of the micro and Rops. The that's master the, of the that's, micro. That's what you need to paint master as your narrative micro. for them to actually make it work. I think they are. They need to be a snowball, for, like just spiraling, tumbling down a cliff, and everyone else just gets smashed. Um, it could happen. I'm just not going to put my eggs in that basket. <laughs> not right now. Yeah. All right, Quack. You have two picks. Lead us off on your first. What have you got to take now? Is it is it finally time for M80 to get selected, the final one seed, or are you going to take something a little more, a little more proven? As your pick, I have the ch- I have the chance here to do the funniest thing of all time, <laughs> but um, no, we have uh, I think we've scratched off all of the favorites pretty much because we have those sort of top five teams that you would kind of lock in for a win. So at this point, it's more about the maybe underdog picks. I can't I can't pick out any of these any of the remaining teams and say they have a um uh, and say they have a realistic chance of winning the event. So now it might just be more about the tacticals. And I have a few I'm deciding between, but I might start off with the Liquid pick. Um, no matter how this Vitality game goes, because I think they've showed good form. I think, I'm not sure Ultimate is the ultimate offer, <clears throat> but I think they've shown good stuff, and I think they can absolutely win <clears throat> uh, one... Uh, they're going to need to win two games. I think they could absolutely win two playoff games, and we could see a Liquid top four here. Um, studio event. They have that ultimate player who's not particularly experienced. They have... Maybe not. Maybe they aren't as cohesive as some other teams just yet. They have made roster changes relatively recently, so <clears throat> um, 
maybe you know that studio environment helps them out a bit you know it helps them work with you know what they have maybe a bit more um <clears throat> so i'm pro i'm probably gonna say liquid here yeah uh as my first pick no matter how it goes um might be just one game if they if they upset vitality i'm definitely going liquid <laughs> so yeah I mean, they 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 took care of ends, which is you know, blah. and then they they took they had a fairly comfortable win against VP, who also ma uh, ended up making making playoffs, looking a bit better now than they have in the past, um, and that's solid. And if you face a similar level team to VP, like a lower end top ten team, if that's who you end up facing in those playoff games, I'd absolutely take Liquid, um, and I think they've just been honestly like. Since making the changes they did, I think they've gone from strength to strength. I think they're just moving up with every event. It's a it's a slight improvement every event, but it, it is an improvement, I think. Yeah, uh, I was going to say earlier that the liquid pick was one that I was going to be probably inclined to take if I was in either of your positions towards the end of the of the choosings. So that's you know I'm I'm a believer in liquid. Um, I've always been a believer in like the system that they that they were trying to build, but never really coming to the fruition that you know they wanted it to i guess uh, every rebuild after every rebuild they give me a reason to believe they give me some sort of a you know uh, a spiel on how this is the thing and this is the next greatest thing and you know we've worked so hard to get here and we're all so so in sync and on the same page and then it looks like they're that fucking meme i can't get out of my head where it's like katie and pointing in one direction on the cart and then like somebody like upside down on one side and the other people <laughs> pulling it in the other direction like, like that's just the kind of thing with Liquid that's been for so long. And I think now with Twists kind of putting his foot down when he returned to this team and having experienced what that was like, I I, I can't help but stand behind it. So I, I say it's a pretty good pick. I'll go with that. So far, everyone's gotten good picks, I will say. This is where things are about to get mm. a little crazy, I feel, though. Shit's about to hit the fan. Yeah, things going to get real ugly <laughs> once we get past <laughs> this point. Uh, just wait until you hear let's, mine. Let's stop picking Brazilians. Let's stop picking other stuff. But let's focus on this Liquid lock-in, which yeah, I'm also actually a big fan of. Uh, there's a sort of, I'm sort of developing my own, like, version of, well, I always see, like, NFL analysts, they like to point, like, you know, judging two teams, you know, you can keep it simple, you can just judge head coach, quarterback, if you've got the advantage there, you'll have the advantage coming in, you'll be the favorite. Counter-Strike, you know, kind of like, if the IGL and the best player on the server, you might be, you might be in with a shot. Liquid, they don't have the best IGL. Let's be real, he's new, new system. They don't have the best individual player, but when you look at the roster, top to bottom, and you tell me their worst player in any given series can be worse than the other team's worst two? It can be quite difficult. In most matchups, they probably are better. Even if they are Yekindar, like Yekindar has been questionable over the last year or so. He's had a good run of form recently, and even on his off days, he's playing his role as needed under this IGL. And he's got some nows, he's got great comms, he's got great ideas. He can provide a lot. So I think this Liquid side is slightly like suspiciously quietly stacked and a lot of people haven't quite realized it. i think the ultimate signing threw us all for a loop even me like i've watched this kid play tier 2 counter-strike and i'm not saying i ever thought he was like a bum and shouldn't be here but i never expected a direct tier one just call up i expected you know he upsets some teams in a qualifier makes a deep run with an ago then gets that shot but he just went straight into it started fucking people up to put it politely and they've got a real shot of just out firepowering a lot of their matchups in these early rounds. And it's going to be rough yeah. to end up in the spirit bracket. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what up, Twist? Just go out <laughs> shoot Donk. Have fun. I mean, Uncle yeah. Chopper, I'll give you a coin flip. Out shoot Donk, not so easy. So Uncle Chopper, he hit me. <laughs> <laughs> like... It'll be interesting to see how they perform in the playoffs, but I think it's a great pick, and they are a sneaky Dark Horse team. Maybe this is the end of their rise with the IGL, like, honeymoon coming to an end. But I hope for their sakes it's not. They have a yeah. crazy record, actually, since making these changes. They they beat Na'Vi twice in the fall groups, and they lost to FaZe twice in Cologne. One of them was the opening series, one of them was the playoff uh, qualification game, where they took a map of FaZe. And aside from those two FaZe losses, they've only lost one game since making the changes, and that was against Legacy in the Rio qualifier, which they then made up for by qualifying to Rio by beating Legacy. So, hmm. um, that's a stumble, but they make up for it by beating the same team again. I, I think that's and more relatively dominantly. excusable. Yeah. Um, that's relatively uh, excusable. So, like, I, I take that. I, I take that. So, they beat Navi twice in last fall groups. Like, that's immediately... I can't remember if that was just before or just after esports world cup but whichever it is that's impressive as fuck um 
for a fresh team. It could be Honeymoon, but I'm probably going to bank on that Honeymoon going on for a little bit longer. So yeah, Liquid is my pick. Uh, I do have another pick. I'm sort, I'm sort of looking at three picks here, and I could do a funny thing. Yeah, talk us through it. Talk us through the three picks. Let us know every yeah. thought bouncing around that head of yours. I, I've got a couple of kind of, kind of ruled out. Like I, I, Some outside candidates would be like Eternal Fire, interesting. That maybe are interesting, complexity interesting. But I don't think... I don't think they have better chances than these three. So I'm looking at like M80, Big, or Mongols. And I'd like M80 would be funny just to like punish Tony. That would be kind of funny. Because other, so he, does, he doesn't get to pick M80. I'm probably not going to uh, pick M80, I'll tell you what. Okay. I'll t- I will take <laughs> no M80. I will M80 absolutely right take M80 in that case. <laughs> uh, because uh, they have one game to win. Um, and they, they look they just look fun. I just I just love M80. Yeah, we talked about them a lot before. You're the bomb. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Not they rebranded. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I still got the old logo in the graphics. New, so. Your wasteland. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, fuck. Yeah. They uh, they look fun, and Lake looks really fun. Uh, Lake is one of the players to look out look out for, and I I just like his attitude, and I don't see that stopping in the playoffs whatsoever. I think they go into that game with several days of preparation, probably knowing roughly who they're gonna play. I think Sin like brings out the whole playbook and like Lake comes in firing in all fucking cylinders and just goes, "You guys are horrible!" Like and then that whole thing and then, uh, um, yeah. I mean, I think they might still be in a spot where it's not necessarily hard to prep for them, but maybe teams underestimate them a bit. And we know that actually plays. I like based on what all the play like all the big team players say, uh, that plays into a big part of like their game a lot of the time. More some teams more than others. Flamesy said a similar thing, like pretty much most of the time when they lose, it's because they think, oh, we're so much better than them, we don't have to really try. Which is a bit arrogant, perhaps, but it's it happens. And like I think that's absolutely something MAT could benefit uh, from in a game like this. So yeah, I I'll take them to make top four. Yeah. Um, just as an aside, uh, Lake hitting his first ESL Pro League hits his first playoff at the age of nineteen. It's pretty cool. Mm. Um, I'm I'm a big I'm a big old Lake fan. It's no no surprise. Just check my Twitter like once a week, and you'll see a Lake tweet probably. But yeah, I mean, I I have no I have no gripes with you stealing the pick because it's one that I have. I can't really make at the position that I'm in right now. I need to I need to be a little bit less uh focused and, and tunnel visioned on my my patriotism and i need to be a little bit more realistic about who's going to get me that win and i say that and my pick's going to be wacky and wild um so I, I guess i'm just lying to your faces but <laughs> yeah yeah i think uh i think that's a good choice i think uh, i think they are a fun team i think that's undeniable i think all the content surrounding them since their additions just really brought them up hoist, hoisted them up onto a you know a pedestal of of real content to be made around them and they've got a a real window of opportunity to slip in as an organization into the window of esports in general right now i think so now would be the time to do it and it'd be one hell of a way if they broke through with a win in playoffs as well i think m80 have salvaged what could have been a horrible situation given that they essentially lost their win con and that could have been really brutal Uh, but they've adapted they've brought in a player who's immensely talented one of the few names that was ever given to me as a north american player on the rise uh, about a year or a year or so ago um obviously after already jaba at that point i was gonna say jaba was the one who yeah you were i was given like him. three odd names from north america specifically like no brazilians allowed lake was in there and lake at that point had no picture on his ltv played with a mix i'd never heard of like i hadn't heard of most of his teammates at that point but he had some okay like he had some decent entry fragger kind of stats and i was like oh, okay maybe one to keep an eye out for and he slowly, like, you know, grows his rep, grows his rep, gets a chance on M80. It starts a little rough. Of course, he does have that one series where he shits on Cole just to course, ignite the NA rivalry even further. But I just love the way that they've allowed him to come in, kind of mold themselves a bit to his style. Sin's gotten a little more of himself when he's needed to, a little more out of rec, a little more out of swisher than we have historically. Like, put a little more on their shoulders. And it's all in all created a roster that's still somehow threatening despite having lost so much now we can of course attribute some of their success to their road to the playoffs to be fair they played cold in the opener a domestic matchup they've already proven they can win they fanatic and that i mean we don't have to relive that 71 round horror show but we just have to say it could have been worse than fanatic given 
that this is a tier one event and then they play imperial in a seeding game like it's not been a convincing dominant run with all these big upset names but it's been plenty good enough to get them in this position and now they have all this time to prep they get to see the bracket get to see everything play out and maybe they have something up their sleeves to make a miracle happen we'll have to wait and see but I, I respect the pick. I respect the hustle. I do think there are three picks that are better than this, probably at this point. But it's great to talk about M80. They're a fun little team. And they prove to Cole that there is talent in the region. They're just getting stale. Damn. Yeah. That's, that's all right. I got. Yeah, it's up to you. You've <laughs> got a final pick. Uh, uh... Make it special. Make it good. All right. I'm going to talk through mine, talk through my, my thought processes here. My for fun, silly, goofy, haha pick, but also not really, is big. Um, I think Studio Land for Searson is also a really good time for me to go into them. I think that they're due for something at some point, and I feel like Searson hitting a stride is a really, really good sign of what things to come might be when Crimbo and Tabson honestly haven't looked like Omega level threats like they have been in previous. I think those two showing up on a good day and Searson playing this one as he has been thus far is just kind of a perfect storm for them to find a first game win. I don't think that they can win the event or anything like that. I just think that they're on a hot strot, and if they can just get one good victory in there, if they can slot in between maybe like a, a lower quality team in this playoff that they get seeded against, as we're unaware of who that will be, I think that there's a real chance they can just kind of wallop them and then get walloped themselves onto the next. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that kind of a, a mentality that I would have with that pick. And then otherwise, I think, I think kind of the same it's idea of I, I misunderstood. No. I thought you'd locked in big. I was like, okay, no, no, no. And then, right, and then my go. my other. Pretty much only option I think I would actually consider going for right now would be Virtus Pro. I think for the same reasons in terms of just them being due for something, it's like poking it with a stick, like do something. I think that they just kind of like they're in a weird enough place where it's like sink or swim in, in the same roster ideas for phase where they kind of need to do something here because you can tell changes are on the horizon. You can tell that there's something to brewing. The major cycle is on us. Are they going to be doing it before it, after it, waiting through it? Who knows? But I think, in again, a studio land scenario where Electronic's been popping, he's been given the opportunity now to farm a little bit in terms of the lower level teams. Not something, honestly, we've seen from him on this Virtus Pro team in general. Again, another one of those things where it's like, Searson's hot, Electronic is hot. How long can they remain like that? And will everybody else actually follow in step? So, <sighs> painfully, I want to go with Big, but I'm going to go with Virtus Pro. That's going to be my choice. Um, I think Big would have been more fun. Uh, but I, again, I hate being in the damn middle. I have <laughs> I've got no opportunity to have any fun right now. <laughs> well, 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 Virtus Pro. Do you know what's hilarious about this? We call mm. Virtus Pro on this show Yumi's Abusive X because he just keeps crawling back to them. And <laughs> lo and behold, the man who fills in his position just goes crawling back to I felt Virtus it. Pro. You're welcome, Yumi. He's not going to thank you for that. It's never worked out for him, hence the abusive part. Uh, well, what if it works out for me now that he's gone and he's pissed? <laughs> now hear me out. Yeah, maybe VP's got a thing for... Yeah, you. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, whoa, <laughs> for what? And maybe you're just better at dodging lefts, but we'll have to find out. It's a, it's a weird pick, because obviously the pedigree's there. Uh, we talked about this briefly on the double swing. They're definitely a team with... Another double swing on retake the week. Well, they're a team with just major winners, one to five. I mean, not all of them feel like you know all time great players. You went on an all time great run. Like some of them are like Norbert was also there, but yeah, yeah, they're still technically major winners. They're players who've been deep in playoffs over and over again. And at this point, you kind of have to just believe in Jame. He's done it with so many different rosters of greatly varying quality even now he's still not playing with a true full-on super team there's still question marks about certain pieces but i don't know it's a gamble it's a gamble yeah. i can respect though i like th i like that gamble. thank you it's a big risk but fuck it put some respect on those major winnings yeah there's an interesting caveat to them which is they are the only team aside from the reigning major champions who have all major champions on their team like all five players are major champions. Um, two different rosters at that, impressively enough. Uh, it's names with pedigree. You kind of have to respect them to a degree. Um, I think, like you say, we know changes are coming. And I think 
I don't I'm not really sure what to make of those. I think it's very much sink or swim. Um, I th- depending on what people say, it could be anything from cutting Norbert for someone slightly less bad. It could be anything. It could be anything from cutting Jame, making electronic IGL, bringing in a new coach and a better opera, and that's a very substantial change. So those whatever whatever happened ends up happening to them is um, it could have a very big bearing. VP have to win three games, and I'm not sure in their current form I would put them up to win three games at all. <laughs> to uh, <laughs> just any three games, um, but there's definitely opponents in the in the playoff bracket which I would probably put them above. So, yeah, I yeah, uh, I, all right. I think the pick is reasonable. Yeah, I think the pick is reasonable. You you debated about big, and I would probably have picked big though. Um, I like big. Damn it! Why can't yeah. I have nice things, man? <laughs> <laughs> I like big. You just but I, I, the I, VP yeah. call just just beckoning you. Just like you got to pick it. You're in that position on the screen. You just have to do it. My mind's telling me no, but my body is telling me yes, man. <laughs> Exactly right. Yep. Okay, I've got an interesting scenario here because I've been I've been hearing all this good stuff about big, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. I buy none of it. I do not buy uh, this big good. roster. I was going to say, damn you. <laughs> not a fan. Uh, yeah, rig on all of a sudden. Besides, he's also just going to be amazing, and Searson's banging. I don't know. There's a stage JDC. now. JDC. Yeah, JDC's been decent for a while, and that's not really been winning them games. So. I don't believe in the win conditions that have activated. And I'm going to look through the second place teams, and I've, I think I've got a bit of a... It's not quite a coin flip. It's more of a dice roll. Because, yes, Vi- Vitality just beat Liquid. It's official. And so Liquid are a second place team, but I don't have access to them. So that's written off. And the other two... Well, there's three more. Isn't there three more? You guys haven't picked another second place, have you? Eternal Fire, MIBR, and Imperial. Those are the three. Now, both the Brazilians have got big upsets in their groups. Just in terms of form, and I think they could be like feeling about themselves. Imperial 2 0 Maus, both maps in overtime with huge performances from Decency and Phelps. And technically, Try on that second map was amazing. His, just, his first map performance being suspiciously bad, considering he's usually a Dust 2 main, uh, kind of offsets it. But that's the Imperial side of it. MIBR in their group. They beat 9Z. Firstly, a domestic matchup they have to win just for, you know, the rep, the bragging rights. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, but then go on and beat Spirit 2-1. Yeah, they beat them on Nuke. And then they beat them on Anubis in overtime after getting crushed on their own map pick, I believe, on Ancient. Uh, not a great... Another great upset for them on these Brazilian teams. But then they go and lose to G2 and you think, maybe that's more their level. Maybe that was a bit of a... Bit of a nice accident that they got through there. Happy little accident. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the team who, sure, lost their seeding game as well and didn't beat anyone particularly impressive to get there, just to be honest. But I think Eternal Fire are secretly the most dangerous second-place team left. Oh. Eternal Fire, they don't have the best IGL on the server, most likely. I don't think Major's that great in IGL. But what they have is arguably two riflers who can do disgusting things to your team. One of them especially, he's got an entire peak named after him. It's Zantares, the man who made Big relevant for a little while uh, just by providing so much rifle firepower power to them. They yeah, can um, pick up an impressive win here. Sorry, I'm going to keep spieling. I've got so much yeah, to say good. about Eternal Fire. Big fan. They didn't pick up an, a particularly impressive win here. Let's be real. They beat FlyQuest no. 2-0. Sorry, Aussies. You're still not impressive. They beat Sangal 2-0. And as much as some of us on this call may be fans of this org, fans of the roster they've assembled... Give me a jersey. <laughs> 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 They're not a big name. That way, The way they t- came into that Na'Vi series, the way they played on that opening map, that Anubis, considering what was up against them, and considering Zantares wasn't on his A game, like... That's not the best version of him. I think there's a lot just of belief built up in this roster. Woxic, the most stable version of him we've seen in a long time. Yeah. Zantara's a beast fragger. Wakadia figuring out that CT side's not that complicated. I can still just shoot people in the head. And my God, we've got a threat here. 
coming out in second place, only needing to do a little bit of upsetting. They have to grind their way through an entire bracket. They just need a couple wins. And they can do it on momentum. They can do it off the back of Zantaras. Hell, I've seen them do it off the back of Woxic. That's how electric he can be. This is an upset rate to happen. Tony, why am I an idiot? Or why am I a genius? Maybe this is all complimentary. No, no. You're a genius. Um, definitely an Eternal Fire fan myself, man. It's the perfect storm of all of these players from Turkey finally coming together. And honestly, the whole time that I'm watching these teams, like for literally, literally years, I'm saying to myself, why the hell is Waxik not playing with Zonteras? And who the hell is going to be the Messiah to join this team to make it not just in slot, in slot shit or fifth here? And Wikadia from the woods... Fresh hot and off the Academy project. He was like 18, maybe even 17 at the time. I don't know, but he was 18 at the time, I guarantee. He joins this roster and he looks like an absolute stud against every team that he should. And he starts to punch up his weight class a little bit more and more now as the time has gone by. Dude is young. He's got to shake off a little bit of the nerves in these higher level games. Going to majors, going to S tier lands, right? Like these are events that you, you got to say, all right, dude, I mean, like. I'm not going to scream at you if you don't top frag against FaZe. Like, you're not, you're, you're young, Buck. Like, it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. You have Zantaras to do that for you. If he's just coming into these games and showing up and putting up a 1.0 number, I'm saying against like a FaZe clan, that's fine because he pisses on everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Um, very beautiful Thanks, pick. Um, we say, we, I like to call Eternal Fire one of those teams who can beat anyone, which I, I give that moniker to a couple of teams, but these guys definitely can. Um, they were deservedly so top eight at the major. I don't think there was any question marks around them being there. I think they they definitely earned their spot. I honestly picked them to beat Navi in that quarterfinal, and that was you know it's it's coming up on half a year ago, but I think the same still applies. Um, they they are a very talented team. They can they on their day they can beat pretty much anyone. Um, and I think you might be right. Just the fact they didn't have one of those huge opponents on their way to qualification that, you know, they haven't really been able to show that upset potential. Um, they've been in a downturn lately, and then they start doing pretty good again. Um, and they they are second seed team, though. Yeah, no, I think, I think you might be right. You might be right here. But it's definitely an outside pick. It's definitely not one you would lock in as uh, likely to happen. But yeah, it's uh, out of the options you have, uh, I think you've done a good job here. Um, I don't think there's anyone left out which you could have picked instead. Yeah. There's arguments to yeah. make for my BR, for Imperial, and I'd be willing to hear you out if you want to defend those ideas. It's just for me personally, I'm like, Firstly, I've said I said this when we did the group stage previews. I pretty much refused to pick Brazilian teams. I don't trust their local play as a gauge, and that's most of what I had to go on was how they looked against each other, and that's never been very reliable. So I just decided I'm going to avoid them, and I'm going to keep it here now. I'm just going to pick the team I watch over and over again against getting EU reps, getting reps against big teams, showing that they can hang consistently and showing them they can upset. So yeah, that's basically the logic for it. Really hoping it pays off, but those are the picks. And there's a but there's a tradition first. A lot of the time when we do these, we kind of go through favorites, then talk about the favorites we haven't picked. Go through the underdogs, talk about if there's any special underdogs we want to talk about. There's okay. one team we've been bringing up, just getting the guests to, to share their thoughts on recently. And I want to do that again because heroic were an option. No one picked them, <laughs> um, and I think just instinctively I want to say for good reason. But I want to hear yep. your good reasons. I'm gonna start with uh, why not Tony. Why not Heroic? What do you not like about them? What do you like about them? Is there any saving this roster? Um, I'll, I'll go in that order. Uh, why I believe it was the first qu question was, why did I not pick them? Yep. Uh, why did I not pick them? Uh, they are in a state of disarray, so it seems and feels, based on a lack of clear driven star power. It's a... It, 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 also, actually, answer the last question now. Is the roster savable? Yes, absolutely. The roster is savable. You have quite possibly one of the best, if not top three, anchor players in the world, in my opinion, in Shush, a player who can put up numbers time and time again. Given any position you'll throw his way, he'll get his one and then some in many instances. You look at the in game leader in Kixan, a little green. Uh, obviously, that was a pick that everybody was a little bit skeptical on just based on the fact that the Heroic are rebuilding from the ground up, having lost everything, basically. And Kixan was the best pick they could have gone for at that given time. There was no budget pick that would be better. There was no veteran pick that was on the table that would have been better for them, except maybe Glaive. We see how that shit's going over and ends. So whoop-de-doo. Uh, it's like 
they, they did the best with what they had. They got all the pieces. They kept the ones that they were given. Tess and Shush were never problems. Nertz was a clear player that, that was available, and he was in a crumbling ends made a lot of sense. The problem is these five players in the same team just don't really seem to work. I don't know what it is, but I think it's just a matter of them not having a Nico. Whereas like Tess is probably the player you would point to to be that player, if that makes sense, in his positions. It's like, but he's not though. So why are we trying to make him? Like what? It's it's almost like he he has to get the boot in my mind just based on the fact that this team exists as five, and it sucks. Oh, okay, Quack, your thoughts on heroic? Do you have any interesting takes to share with us? I mean, why did I not pick them? I mean, you might as well yeah. ask why did I not pick a sack of shit? Like they are <laughs> fucking, okay. they're fucking <laughs> awful at the moment. They All are right. fucking awful. Let me crack open a beer. Yeah, they made playoffs. <laughs> they made playoffs. Sack, like, come on. sacks of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think they're fucking awful at the moment. They haven't done shit in ages. Um, and one of the things that I talked to my friends about when we were going into that NIP opening game, it was like, oh, are NIP going to win this game? And I thought, well, NIP have been losing online qualifiers recently. But that's still, like, it's a bit outside your comfort zone if you're NIP. Like, I think as much as they have some green players here, they still sort of live for the LAN. Um, meanwhile, Heroic have been losing on LAN consistently up until this point. Uh, and of course, they should have won that NIP game. Uh, it was just the snap tap thing, which uh, stopped it. <laughs> um, they lose a map to Lin Vision, which, I mean, honestly, Zach, the form Zacker had, that's pretty fucking cool. But yeah, uh, they lose to Sangal and then they beat NIP in the rematch and then they beat Sangal in the rematch and well done you made playoffs I'm I'm not gonna say you weren't favorites in literally every single game you played because I think you were and you still had to make it through the last chance bracket um, and just their past events haven't been particularly good I'm not particularly inspired by this team in general uh, I think all of the pieces are extremely good I think there's no one piece I, I can really point to um, I think Nerds is deservedly like last year top 20 player I believe um deservedly so uh especially even this year this one event he's approaching 130 um so far in the group stage in rating i think degster is a very very good opper i think maybe he hasn't really shown that recently with heroic he hasn't really shown that form which made him someone you might have put in the same conversation as some of the best players in the world like at one point that was something we were talking about when it came to degster um doesn't seem to be the case anymore. I don't know what the reason for that would be. I think Tessas, Shush, as you said, some of the most competent players in their positions. Um, maybe Tessas is somewhere below the mark at the moment, but I think especially Shush, as you said, one of the most, one of the best uh, anchor players for sure in the world. And I think Kixon showed good stuff. Like coming into this team, he that that, that was a good move from Heroic. Just something is not really clicking. And is it fixable? I mean, parts of it, yeah. But I think you need to make a roster change. I think I don't think this particular roster fixes anything. Um, so I will definitely take them to go out in whatever game they play first in the playoffs. Um, sad face. Sad, slightly sad face, yeah. But also just like fix your roster, goddamn. And uh, I think Tessas is again the only player. What do you think about that? Because I brought that point up, and uh, you made a face, and I didn't know if that face was uh, was in relation to that. I don't know if I did a face. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. You just started kind of like going like. I mean, you paralleled him to Nico. Like you could replace well, pretty much anyone positions. with Nico. They're, no, they yeah. play the same positions. Like literally all of them. So yeah, but I'm like who would you get? If is in Nico spots and he isn't Nico, then he would be in my mind the first to go if they were looking to get a star. Yeah, but also <laughs> you can't get Nico. Like, I know they can't, can't get Nico, dude. <laughs> who, who are we you getting in that case? Yeah, I mean simple. I don't know. I don't give a shit. Just get this guy. <laughs> get this guy a... A job that he may be able to perform in. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, like, I, I get the point. The bag, I get the point. I get the point. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you're right about that. I think they do need to do. May, they may. They need to make something happen. I don't know who the fuck they're gonna put, put up in yeah. that position at the moment. Um, got cold Zara. But he was a good player, right? <laughs> he was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he plays those same spots, right? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you could definitely upgrade Tessas, but I'm not sure that one upgrade does too much. Star, I think they they do need a bit of star power, but I also think they already have Nerds and Degster. Like it's that's a he that's a heavy hitting front too, so to speak. Um, I think Nerds has also spoken about having to do a lot more second calling than he was doing on Ens. Um, a lot more responsibility is on him as a caller. As a not as a calling, but yeah, oh yeah, as a caller. Um, 
as like the rifler responsible for that part of the game, which wasn't really the case under Snappy uh, with Madden next to him. So, I mean, I think they have some issues. I think the core of it can work it out, but something needs to happen. I don't know if it's a different opera, um, because it's not relevant for this event, but the uh, there is there has been the question about visa issues for Dexter in the past, um, which has been an issue. Uh, his career is kind of surrounded in controversy in a way around a lot of different things. But I don't know if it's an op upgrade. I don't know if it's a new rifle in place of Tessus. I don't know if it's maybe even a new caller. I don't think so, but maybe. So All I'm saying is that Blame F and Tessus share four of their seven spots and one maps he doesn't play. So that's all I'm saying. I'm, that's all I'm saying is that Blame F's out there. <clears throat> now we're talking. Now we're fucking cooking. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> King, what do you think, man? We haven't gotten your thoughts on this. What, what, what is your heroic well, stance? Frequent viewers will have heard me talk about this team enough, but I'll just oh, okay. talk about some general points. I mean, this is a unique event in that every other mm -hmm. time I've had to talk about this team, we've come off an event where either Dex has not played or Dex has played a small amount and kind of played bad. Um, mm -hmm. Here, we've gotten the formula we expected would be successful for heroic. Uh, we have Nerts as in played pretty much every game they've played been the best player on the server. Dexter has played like a proper star orper, like one of the best you can hope for. Not not quite elite elite, but pushing it. And then you've gotten the role player performances out of Tess and Shush you kind of thought you could rely on. But the, yes, I think the the kind of conclusion we come to is that this team needs more somehow out of a Tessas than they actually could have got in the past. And in this event, I think they got less than what you'd like consider the minimum for him. So I think this is actually the first event in a long time I can say I don't think Heroic are in dire need of surgery like to save them because they actually made playoffs. They beat teams they should beat. But I'm always worried when I see them lose to Sangal. When I see them, I mean, technically lose to NIP. Like, it's a bit rough to judge them for that, ser that series specifically. I just think that potentially here we've actually seen the first blossoming of the roster we theorized we'd get was it like eight months ago no they signed dexter four months ago it's the other players that came in eight months ago um yeah they had they had nikodos for a while it yeah a unfortunately a but they, they made that period. work a decent amount like mostly with nikodos on a rifle but they they made playoffs a lot with him and that's fairly impressive considering he's now a tier two warper like they are i think starting to look a lot stronger and I would not have been object. I would have objected, but I wouldn't have hated someone deciding to take a flyer on them as a pick, especially over someone who's less tenured, less experienced, like an M80. I think maybe a heroic would have been an interesting like slip in, just be like, "Hey, I'm buying the dip. Like this is it's been down, down, down. I'm expecting that stock to turn around and go back up now. You know, we've finally seen some rallying from them. This is a moment of strength. The brackets be are out, by the way. Oh, Ooh. the brackets out. Okay, most important part. That's I was delaying the show till we got the bracket. Um, <laughs> I wanted that. Here, I'm just going to issue, I'm just gonna issue a correction with her, with Nikolos. They made playoff once. I dropped it in chat. So correction. here we go. We've got the Mongols oh big. My God. The Mongols big. That's going to be the start. So um, honestly, I'm glad I didn't pick big because I feel like Mongols are going to go on a tear with that start. I Heroic feel like my 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 M80 pick has picked, worked out absolutely perfectly here. Right? Really Heroic, let me say the damn teams, Quack. <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah. Heroic <laughs> VP, complexity phase. Furia and Spirit, and then past that, uh, you'll have to find out on your own because it won't make any sense if I tell you. But, uh, no, but yeah. Like, we can talk about something here. So, essentially, talking about the one seeds, Vitality will be facing one of Mongols' big or Eternal Fire. Uh, so, I'm, I'm pretty much guaranteed a point here, uh, I think. That's pretty nice. Uh, I'd have liked to see them all make it through, but that's a ridiculous pipe dream. MAT will have to play one of MIBR, VP, or Heroic. All winnable. All winnable, but also all probably better than who they've beaten. So, yeah. question, but definitely a question they can answer. G2 will have to play, and this is going to be, the, I think, one of the roughest ones, Team Liquid, Cole, or FaZe Clan. Now, it could be worse. They could have had Spirit, but I think yeah. a lot of these teams can pose some questions for them, and especially if they don't come in in top form in the playoffs. They don't just outfrag everyone. It could be rough. Then Na'Vi. This is also actually great. Na'Vi could face Imperial, Furia, who cares? Or Spirit. Oh, uh, there's a quarterfinal that could be dude. a grand final. That's going to be sexual. Oh my god. I, mean, I it's think like it is my third it pick. I don't even remember. Phase? Yeah, I got Phase. Okay. There's a I think, okay. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think 
I think my Spirit and M80 picks are looking really good right now because I think Spirit absolutely win those first two games. And then Navi is like the one top team which I think Spirit has had the number of so far um, in the year. Like, and I think Navi themselves said like, yeah, we have a, we have a tough time playing Spirit. Um, they have had all year. So I think, I think that is interesting. That's absolutely interesting. And then M80, I mean, they have three teams which they can beat. They have sort of... I would pro, I would honestly put all three of these teams in the same sort of bracket as the Complexity and Fnatic teams they already beat. Um, and Imperial. So, um, nice. But then, uh, yeah, that, that lower side of the bracket is looking spicy because it is a good yeah. chance we get... It's, there's a good chance we get G2 phase and Navi Spirit in setting up a semi-final matchup. Um. So yeah, that that's gonna be really interesting. Even Liquid would be interesting. Liquid G two, that would be an interesting quarterfinal. That'd, yeah. be, a, that'd be a really good game. I mean, the fascinating yeah. part for me is, well, yeah, you say Spirit have, the, have really had the number of Navi. Navi haven't beaten them since March, March eighteenth, twenty twenty three. Yep, 2023. yep. <laughs> that's the last time they beat them in a series that I can find. Like after yep. after that, it's Katowice. Spirit beat them two one. Major. Yeah, I mean, Spirit beat them two one. Dialus Spirit beat them 2-0. And then the grand final that uh, somehow got skipped in between here of uh, one of the Blasts world final, I think they beat them 3-1 in a best of five. So Na'Vi just yep. have not been able to to beat Spirit. I mean, I guess, I mean, when one team actually has a real star rifler, a real star rauper, it's kind of hard to just outcall them <laughs> ad nauseum. Yeah. It's kind of difficult. The only thing speaking in favor of them is I remember when Spirit were first coming out, they were like... Um, like when they were just beating everybody 2-0, Navi were like the only people taking one map of them off of them in those games. Um, and they were doing it. They, I mean, they, I say they were doing it consistently. They did it twice. It was them and Metisport were the only ones who were able to take a map off of them, aside from Mouse, who at that point were the only ones to beat them. So like, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, now Spirit, you know, Spirit and Navi, that's an interesting matchup. So. I, I'm kind of happy with my picks. I think I have I think I've absolutely picked good teams. I did not envision the bracket to look this way though. <laughs> I did that's yeah. not what I thought was gonna happen, so I've absolutely lucked into that. But that's also kind of in spirit of the viewers, you amateur analysts. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well you speak a big game, you see you're happy with it. They gotta go win the games now. They've gotta go beat Navi. Mm. Uh, they gotta actually do it. I mean, first they've got to get through Fury and Imperial. I mean, we've seen recently some people, some suspect teams have taken maps slash series in t- off of spirit when they've not been prepped or Halley, you know, I didn't get the vibe right. Like, bro, just <laughs> how many times can you say that before you just fire yourself? <laughs> yeah, really. It's a bit of a problem. Um, so that's yeah, going to be fascinating. Yeah. I think already this bracket makes you the biggest loser, T, because uh, you have, all of us have a chance at three points. You cannot get more than two. Yeah, but I also, I think, have the best chance of getting bitch all the points. So... <laughs> You know, I still think I have the favorites to win, so I'm good. Fair. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah, no, we'll see. It's going to be fun. I'm obviously going to be trying to tune in all through the week. Sorry, boss. Uh, you don't watch my videos. You don't know they exist. So uh, going to be a distracted week of work. But uh, until we see what happens, we don't actually know who won. We're going to find out at the end of it. Uh, Yumi, if you're watching, I hope uh, Tony you. did you proud. I mean, he, he got the iconic pick done. He he got your Virtus Pro in there. Uh, little did he know it would be that perfect of a placement. And yes, viewers <laughs> slash fans, let us know what you think of Quack's picks. Um, obviously, rip him to shreds if you think he's an idiot. That's all good. You know, rip as we him say to on, anyway. Yeah, just rip him to shreds anyway. Like, <laughs> make fun of his hair, make fun of his face, his headset, his chair, <laughs> his lamp, his TV, his, his curtain. His laugh. It's a good chair. His <laughs> microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we love the interaction. And yeah, that'll wrap up the show, I think. Yeah. If you enjoyed, yeah. remember to leave a like, sub if you want to see more content. Remember, members get access to a bunch more content and a bunch more privileges because they're better than you. And yeah, that's all for this one. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.